Uh, you've no. heard? I'm too cute for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the opening line. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely not the way to start this one. So we are here, however, with very slow upstream number 11. How is everybody doing today? So what's up? What's up? Um, Alex is dying to get out of here, so we're just going to get started. Um, <laughs> BlackBerry actually opened up a new business unit, essentially consolidating some of the more autonomous pieces of the BlackBerry uh, portfolio. We're talking QNX, we're talking patents. Uh, what do you guys think about that appointment of this new business unit? I honestly think it's very strategically timed. Uh, at this point, they want to start making money off of everything that they got. We're talking Paratech, and again, the patents that they have, over 44,000 uh, filed in uh, actually approved uh, uh, patents. What do you guys think about the news? I agree. So the timing of it is uh, very appropriate, and I love the galvanization of uh, of it all. You know, they're appointing one guy to um, galvanize all of it and to present it to enterprise as a uh, you know one solid offering. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. Yeah, Chin's definitely doing a good job of just cleaning everything up, you know, trying to get everything on one court because for a long time, BlackBerry just had, like, stuff, like, all over the place. You know, now he's finally just kind of, you know, he's getting it together, you know, organizing it how it should be, uh, you know, appointing a, a very uh, prestigious individual who has, a you know, a very long rap sheet and, and a lot of experience and, uh, you know, just education in general in uh, that specific area. So I definitely think he has the right people in charge and, had net, you know, whole division and making sure things, you know, run afloat like they should. It's a good, uh, it's a good decision. It's a good, it's a smart decision because they have all these patents that they don't necessarily use on their own. So they have this this other division or department that's going on. They can kind of, you know, maybe lease out a whole bunch of those patents and get some some revenue from them. Similar to how Microsoft and other companies do that already. I'm sure BlackBerry already does that to an extent now, but this may actually put some more of those patents into other companies' hands so BlackBerry can reap some revenue. I mean, Anyone know I'm, any of uh, the background of uh, Sandy, Dr. Uh, Chenekesu? Yeah, he's a <clears throat> former, I think, Sony guy from Ericsson division. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah, he's, he's there for, like, I want to say almost like a decade. Um, just looking at uh, his background on uh, Business Week, but uh, he's definitely, you know, what he says, he's Dr. What is this? I can't really pronounce his last name. I don't want to chop it up, but <laughs> he holds 71 patents um, in a career that spans more than 20 years in the wireless and mobile radio industry. So uh, he's definitely the right person to be in charge of, of such. Um, and Ericsson, they have... Uh, before they merge with Sony, they have uh, a very deeply rooted um, background in the mobile industry in terms of evolving mobile radio and uh, you know making it uh, become more of the consumer side um, of the business. Uh, they definitely, I, I really don't think people give uh, acknowledge Ericsson, um, you know, in terms of being some of the huge pioneers to really uh, kick off the mobile, um, you know, telecom game and really bringing it to consumers. Like, they, they have a, a huge, huge deal in the background. And, 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 and Sandeep had, like, a he was involved with that, all of this the whole yeah. way through. Well, I, I'm not sure as far as with Ericsson. I know he was working with Ericsson, uh, well, with Sony Ericsson, I should say. Um, he says he served the head of Ericsson Mobile Platforms. Uh, so... I'm sure he's been there for a long time in, in up until well, I guess in in this uh, whole merger of Sony Ericsson, but that I want to say that was like it happened in like the 90s. I'm yeah, not sure when exactly, like but uh, I, I don't like I said I don't know the extent of how long he was with Ericsson specifically, but I know Ericsson prior to their merger with Sony definitely played a huge role in the mobile uh, mobile platform game. Well. Mobile handset game, I should say. They were right there with BlackBerry, bringing about you know push and, and mobile communications right. back on the old RIM devices. So it's definitely great to see Mr. Sandeep, you know, coming on board. It's definitely an interesting time, as we had already discussed. It's just a just such a smart move from Chen. He's like, if I got pieces on the board, they're gonna be working for me. 
This right. isn't just sitting in the background mm-hmm. on a back burner. Everything is going full throttle. So I, I'm, I'm really excited to see the consolidation of those pieces and then, as Jabe kind of touched on, how those pieces may work together to create a good synergy for the company. Let's move on to a, another hire, a recent hire, who's brought on the VP and head of U.S. public sector. We talked about him briefly on the last upstream, but you've actually got a little bit more information from him as he hit the BlackBerry blog with some of the reasoning behind why he's joined the team. Um, he put out uh, you know, two you know, pretty substantial paragraphs specifically on why uh, he's moving over, but I'm going to read the first the half of the first sentence because it speaks for itself. I joined BlackBerry because I know what the government is looking for. <laughs> end, st- end statement. I mean, yes, it goes on to talk about the intricacies, but more or less he realizes where the government is going and what type of solution they're looking for. Do you guys think that pulling this guy in from good technologies is a smart move for BlackBerry, or should they kind of keep within the lines of what they already know? They seem to be pulling a lot from uh, Sybase and some of Chen's uh, earlier work. <laughs> this is kind of a, a different appointment for him. What do you guys think on it? I think it's a good move. I mean, what what Chen's doing is he's not getting a bunch of, like, you know, you new, like, young faces, um, you know, trying to bring, like, a refreshed look to BlackBerry because, you know, that's not what they need. They need, uh, you know, that kind of seniority at the helm, you know, at, at, the, at the head of the ship right now. Um, and what he's doing, he's getting a lot of guys to have prior relations with a lot of the people that they need to get back connected to in order to get back to where they once were. Uh, you know, with Jeffrey I-8, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name either, but... <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I can tell that he's a guy that does have those relationships within the U.S. government to definitely get BlackBerry in more hands of um, government personnel uh, on <clears> the <throat> side. Um, so that's another good move for Chin. Um, and, and these are people, if you pay attention, I mean, he's been there since November, so it's taken them you know, almost a year to you know get these people in the position that they have been. So you can tell he hasn't just been like, oh, let's go for this guy. Like He's, he's actually giving it thought um, and pretty sure that he's definitely made, you know, a, a smart and intelligent decision in terms of who to place where and how they're going to move from here on out. I agree, man. I think those, um, uh, what you touched on earlier, the seniority element, just that you bring in these heavyweights, right, these veterans, and mm-hmm. they know. Not these young guys that are trying, he doesn't have time to experiment. He right. It's to happen straight away. Um, you know, be or remain uh, optimized and productive. So bringing in these guys is just like really strengthening um, BlackBerry's image, and also you know for all the shareholders, all the people out there looking at the company right now, um, it just gives them such a solidified branding overall. It's like man, they're pulling in these great people, and the team is just getting stronger and stronger. So moving forward, it just builds that confidence of where BlackBerry's headed. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you know, touched on it a lot. Like, perception really is everything. And we don't need to be like Google and Apple and get these young people to just make it seem like, oh, we're a cool, hip company, come work with us. You know, if they're pushing enterprise and business, whether you like it or not, my, my, you know, my stepdad, who's a business owner, he trusts the older people who have been doing it more so than he does a younger person that, you know, and and they have the, the connections, like you guys were saying. So much of business is just who do you know? And can you get your foot in the door? The younger people, it's it's tough to have that many connections. So, you know, just in, just pushing, you know, BlackBerry's perception. This is huge, I think. Yeah, and I agree that bringing on old blood, so to speak, to to a new regime is is just an interesting infusion. When we look at the people that Chen is bringing in, you know, on a broader scale, and he's definitely bringing in, as as Jubei had mentioned, some heavyweights. I mean, we're here to get results. We're not here to experiment on on what's to come. It's yeah. like, I, I know what we want to do, and I know the people I need to get it done. So absolutely impressed with Chen's execution across these, these months that he's been. He's not even been a full year at this point, correct? We're right. getting there, almost. Yeah, yeah. almost. Like more months, and you'll be in yeah. here, so. so. Did you guys see that uh, Crackberry's Blaze actually challenged uh, Mr. Chen to the ALS uh, ice, <laughs> ice uh, <laughs> bucket challenge? I'd like to see, you know, even a, donation, even a donation, like him just acknowledging it in some way yeah. would be pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> I saw. I know that uh, Cluely nominated Blaze, right? Yep. Yeah, I didn't see. I didn't see it happen to Blaze. Did they push? Oh, I see here. I'll watch that later. Can you do it? <laughs> it's it's funny because like Blaze mentions uh, 
this is the second time he did it because the first time he like he missed. <laughs> he, he did the water buckets himself, like a one man show, and someone behind the camera. So I don't know. Pretty cool that you know the community is tossing that back and forth. You know, you got to respect BlackBerry, uh, BlackBerry employees doing it and then passing it back off to the community. And it's just yeah. a real, real good relationship that we all have with uh, the whole crew over there. Let's move on to some developer news. Uh, BlackBerry actually announced that they are hosting an introduction to Amazon development for developers uh, through a developer program webinar. Do you, uh, Brandon, you had mentioned that you, you were kind of back and forth between native. I mean, you obviously love native as a, a developer, yeah. but also thinking about tapping into <clears throat> some of what Amazon had to offer. You know, again, you're talking about devices beyond BlackBerry 10. You're talking about all the Amazon phone and uh, and their Kindles and things like that. Does yeah. it interest you at all looking at some of those webinars, or do you think you're going to pass them up? The the announcements I saw for this were more mostly geared towards HTML5, which... Um, in the grand scheme of things, if you have an HTML5 app, I think it's it's already pretty pretty well integrated into BlackBerry 10. But this is a good opportunity for people with HTML5 apps to kind of think about putting it back onto putting it onto the Amazon Web Store, so they have a wider audience in that sense. In terms of actually, you know, me going to this introduction developer program, yeah, I might check it out just to see what they offer. Um, I personally. I don't know. I, if I was going to go to the Android route, I'd probably go and focus on doing some native uh, Android applications as opposed to doing, yeah, web works. But yeah. I, got a quick, I got a quick question. I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to cut anyone off because I know what, what you mentioned, like HTML5 um, coming to the forefront, and I remember uh, Steve Jobs has said like a long time ago how, you know, of course, <laughs> with Adobe Flash, how that's kind of, you know, it's going to go out the window because HTML5 is going to be able to run, you know, this whole format of its own, so to speak. Can you, like, not only educate me, <laughs> but for people watching that aren't developers who really don't know how that whole thing works, and you too, Alex, um, like, how is that going to kind of integrate itself, especially with the whole Amazon thing working now? Um, aside from Cascades, because I know it's his own thing, how how is HTML5 really integrated? How is it going to affect developers in the future in developing apps and such? I'll, I mean, I'll touch on Brandon. You could probably get more in, in yeah. depth about it, because like what yeah. I do for a living is I'm a web designer and I make HTML5 websites. And right. you'll notice that more and more websites out there. Um, they're trying to act more like apps. You've probably visited a website on your phone, and it looks and functions kind of like an app, like right. the yeah. slide out, you know, sidebar mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is HTML5 is this one universal language where the entire internet runs on it. So why shouldn't apps on your phone run on it? And then you can almost just have a website that's an app, and like vice versa, and just integrate the website into a mobile app. And there, you know, the developer has to add it one thing, and it works across everything. So, like, ultimately, it'd be great, but the thing is, like, native Cascades, you get to utilize the Cascades framework, and then, like, if they open up their base styles, your your app automatically gets all of these, like, improvements, whereas, like, an HTML, you know, app, it's not going to do that because you're based off your own kind of, you know, functionality and everything like that. But it's it's... For the future, it's where everything is going to go because it's the one universal language, but I think there's mm -hmm. always going to be core native experience like t five years from now for instance there's gonna be a lot of HTML5 but you know the core native imagine where that's gonna be in five years it's not stopping so yeah. it'll never catch up but it'll get to the point where we're like oh this works well so it's one platform you could develop for everything but it's not gonna overtake it yeah Alex is definitely better geared to answer that question but um, from what I do know is that HTML5 has found quite a big um, developer following as of lately over the past few years because it is a universal app language that can be used on all three of the major platforms or four major platforms now. The issue that a lot of developers run with um, with HTML5 apps is the performance aspect. So for instance on BlackBerry 10 you'd have to use WebWorks and using that depending on how you develop the app, there are some trade-offs in terms of performance. Uh, I know a few WebWorks developers who had some issues where um, you couldn't really do peak in WebWorks apps um, mm -hmm. to an extent. So those are some trade-offs, but at the end of the day, right now, I think HTML5, it, in a few years, it will be the future, like Alex said, but right now, in terms of performance and, and tapping into the core experience on, on platforms, it, it's still the, the native um, development languages that are preferred. 
Absolutely. And we look at the whole the mobile landscape in general, we see what Firefox is doing with their OS, which is entirely built on HTML5. So, yeah. you know, you can imagine as these systems and, and OS become more ubiquitous, we're going to be able to share a lot of our, our code, so to speak, at a baseline level across multiple devices. Again, making it easier for developers to target these different systems. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm interested because uh, who's, got the, who's got the best HTML5 browser? We do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we even beat out Google Chrome for HTML5 uh, support at this point. They're... I think they're at like 80, 480, and we're at like 491 with this latest yeah. uh, 10.3 OS. Yeah, it, I mean, <laughs> you need to understand that a lot of those numbers, what they are, it's just support for, like, um, I can't think of, just, just little things that aren't supported in other browsers. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're even going to be used. Like, yeah. certain plug-in kind of things where you can, like, say, send files over this or whatever that uses HTML5. <laughs> like, if people aren't using it, it's not a big deal. It's good to have full support. And yeah. it's just good for the future of BlackBerry because they care about it and they know it's such a big, you know, thing. So yeah, it'll, be, like, it'll be a yeah. big driver for sure. At the yeah. same time, your web browser could have, you know, the highest score. But if the majority of web browsers out there don't, then all the apps and all the websites are going to be, you know, built to the lowest common denominator, right? Exactly. To, to which yep. is the most prevalent. So even if you have the, the fastest or the best browser that can function well on certain parameters, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to use all of them. But it's still always good to have a higher number in terms of the web browser, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's bragging rights, you know? Of, of course of, co of course, it comes down as, like, is Chrome a better browser than the PB10 browser? It's like, well, you know, from a <laughs> functionality perspective, maybe, maybe not, but the fact that you have extensions and such a robust, you know, experience on Chrome, it's, it's going to give you a lot more from a usability perspective. Does anyone know whether the 10.3 browser will beat Cascades, or are they continuing with an HTML5 development? They're, dude, they're keeping with HTML5, and I, th I, I, I had a problem with this for a while. Um, I, I was like, dude, come on, just make it Cascades at this point. But, you know, using it, I really think I don't care anymore. I... It's fine. Because I, I had heard I had heard online, I think on, on Twitter from a pretty reliable uh, source out there that they were they had ge gestures now within the 10.3 later builds where you're able to do a gesture to go back and forward and things like that. And I wondered was that a capability they were unlocking by HTML5 or whether they're going to try to transmute that into a Cascades experience. My impression was that they were bringing H an HTML5 browser so that they could port that into the QNX car very easily and not have to develop a fully native experience there. Maybe down the line, 10. You know, X. <laughs> 10. X. That's a good OS name. Uh, <laughs> to, that they can, um, they can bring a fully native experience over on board. Yeah, you, you mentioned the back gesture. Keep in mind, you could do like any of that with HTML5. Like, I've been to websites where you could swipe to the left and it'll bring you back or a new article. Like, mm -hmm. that's just really any, it doesn't need to be a core native mm -hmm. app in order to do that. HTML5 is just powerful. And, and would there be any benefit with a Cascades browser? I mean, I, I'm not educated enough to really know. It might be a little smoother, but it's getting to the point where, you know, it's it's fun to say, too, you're, you're loading HTML5 sites within an HTML5, like, app. Like, it's weird, you know. I don't know. It's not too big of a difference. You know what else is weird? <laughs> what? <laughs> that Rogers, who at first did not want the BlackBerry Z30 at all, <laughs> comes back almost a year later and they have this in the stores now like back on by popular demand they're actually running a deal right now over in Canada across the, the major uh, carriers out there TELUS, yeah. Wind, Wind and, uh, and Rogers that you can go get those devices for zero dollars down I hear that's been a promotion that's kind of been running for a while now how important do you guys think it is to move a Z10 user to a Z30 I feel like the Z30 is so much more future-proof with the new OSs to come that it is a, a very important thing. And with a promotion like that where you could go in, zero down, and just pay it monthly, I, I think that's a huge, huge benefit to any Z10 owner who's on the verge of maybe wanting to move over. What do you guys think? Especially, you know, you, you Canadian there, Brandon. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it's... It's a uh, it's a good move because we're we're running in we're going we're getting close to maybe to to the two year mark now on uh, on Z10 devices, so there are some people who obviously want to switch the device earlier than 
within two or three years. And the Z30, if they if they really enjoyed the BlackBerry 10 experience, having it at zero dollars, which uh, that's also a new promotion now by Telus Rogers and Bell now, um, having it at zero dollars and in Rogers stores, it's got that that visual coverage in the stores. People are gonna look towards purchasing a Z30 if they had a pleasurable experience with the Z10. And I think it can only stand to to benefit BlackBerry in that sense. I also think it speaks volumes to. Um, the amount of sales they've been doing in Canada, as we know, Canada has been a bit one of the stronger countries in terms of BB10. It's not, it's not nearly, you know, not still not number one um, in the entire country, but in some cities, key markets like Toronto and Vancouver, um, it is doing well. So, yeah. Alex, Alex, before we get to you, because we we have Z30s, me, Brandon, and Alex, but Darius and Jubei do not. <laughs> Are you guys tempted by a Z30? Are you waiting for a passport? Does an all-touch high-end device like a Z30 actually interest you at this point? And if that promotion was being run here in the States, <clears throat> would you take advantage of it? I probably wouldn't take advantage of it personally. Just simple fact, because if I'm going to get a Z30 now, you know, I, the, the deal doesn't surprise me. I mean, of course, if you have, you know, the, the latest flagship phone coming, the, the last iteration or the last flagship is now going to be marked down. It's now going to have those promotions that you've been fiending for. So at this point, no, you're going to kind of wait it out. So if I, me personally, if I were to go get it, I'm just going to cash out and you know get it in full. I, doesn't mean that I wouldn't get a Z30 period because I'm still debating of getting one, especially seeing prices on Amazon of like 300 and now below from from people have been telling me you know they're saying like I've seen one for like 280 and things of that nature. Like it's they're getting cheaper and it's because of the passport. So, uh, you know, me personally, I'm still drawn to a Z30. I still believe it's an awesome device. I still believe it's, you know, definitely one of the, if not me personally, not just because spec-wise, but what you can do in, in terms of what it's going to help get you get done for you in terms of production uh, productivity. The Z30 is probably the best, you know, all-touch device that's out there. I'm still waiting for that high end. In the meantime, I will get the passport, but I, I may squeeze the Z30 in there. It's it's a what what defines a high end device to you? Is it specs? Is yeah, it, do it, specs really matter, or is it the experience? I put my I put my 10.3 Z30 against the. Uh, any yeah. any galaxy out yeah, there, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk leagues around these people. It, it's about what you're looking for, you know. I mean, if you're personal to go like Jubei, for instance, you you're probably gonna want a Z30 because of the productivity, the real estate that the screen's gonna give you, and things of that nature. If you're looking for apps, you're looking for gaming and things of that nature, then you're probably gonna lean towards an S5 that's gonna have the specs to help that app run, you know, effortlessly without any lags. Not to say that the Z30 lags, because it definitely doesn't, but you know, if you want that native experience, you want a better gaming experience in terms of just visually with the HD screen, then you may want that. But for some people, that matters. Some people, it doesn't. I mean, it just depends on what your whole thing is. What about uh, you, Jube? How do you feel about it? Um, well, I've been wanting a, a, a Z30 for a while. I think it is, and we uh, BBM'd earlier, and we talked about it. It's like, I think it is a future-proof uh, device. I think it was always uh, under-marketed. Um, at this state, I think BlackBerry is about adoption. You know, you, you have these carriers now, they're trying to push BlackBerry 10 devices, and what better device to push than the Z30? I mean, that's a device that you can show off proudly. Um, with the Q10, with the, the Z10, there's some elements that you could probably show off, but the Z30 really stands out. And with the 10.3 um, coming out, I think the phone is going to be absolutely brilliant. And uh, I also know that with each iteration of uh, OS that comes out, BlackBerry is ingeniously doing more with less. We all know that Specs is remains on the playground as uh, bragging rights. We know that Android always uh, prides itself in having the latest. Um, Apple, not so much, uh, but I love the idea that... Uh, you know, the company is really ironing out and really making the OS, streamlining it, making it extremely efficient and productive without the need to have these crazy specs that just eats up battery life and, and, and just, you know, just unnecessary, uh, you know, uh, things. You know, so, it, it's interesting you bring that up because, you know, when, when we come to down to, like, bragging rights, I, it's very interesting because, like, on the LG G3, which is a very popular uh, high-end, quote-unquote, Android device, 
you've got a lot of BB10 features. On that camera, you can tap the screen anywhere to take a picture. Mind blown. As if we haven't been doing that the last year and a half, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, and their keyboard has predictive swipes just like our keyboard. Um, our, that device has a, you can tap it twice to unlock the device where we can swipe to wake. It's like, we have those same bragging rights, but on lower spec hardware and can do it just as well as they can. So yeah. it's almost like when you look at the Passport device, it's almost, it's like, yes, we're covering the table stakes because we must. This device is going to come out right alongside, you know, the iPhone 6 and the Galaxy Note 4, and it's going to obvi obviously be more pixel dense even than the iPhone is from what we know thus far. This is really just going to be interesting to see. As you mentioned, the Z30, quote unquote, failed or didn't get the proper limelight because it wasn't marketed. Will the Passport, being this high end QWERTY device, get the kind of marketing that it deserves, or is it going to be one of those things that they kind of toss out there under the rug and, you know, the people who need to see it see it, and the rest are kind of just over their head? I know. Think? I think though, if you pair up the passport with the Z30 as an offering, you got the you got the all touch, and then you got the the uh, you know revolutionary uh, QWERTY. It's a solid solid offering, and then the classic for all those who just need the classic. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the marketing. And there's a Z3 in there as well, potentially an LTE up spec one. You know, as uh, as Crackberry Blaze said, the bastard device. <laughs> he, he's absolutely right because you know at this at this point with the Z3 so proliferated across these emerging markets, like building this one different model is kind of you know yeah the classic kind of be labeled as like the stepson like they they should call it that the BlackBerry stepson. <laughs> You know, it it came into. I was telling the guys before we went live. This came. This is a perfect example where I was actually um, on Craigslist. I put my 9930, and someone, you know, they messaged me. They wanted to buy it. I met up with him. Pretty big BlackBerry enthusiast, but he said he tried out the Q10, and he said, you know, he had to go back to his 9930. He just couldn't. You know, the OS was too different. He didn't get the whole swiping thing, and then like not having the everything. So we got to talking, and I explained to him the passport that was coming out. And then more importantly, I said, you know, the Classic is probably going to be perfect for you, though. It's essentially the 9930, but it, it's, it's the new operating system. And I'm realizing more now how many people are still using older devices and how important the Classic really is now. Like, this instance alone has really changed my perception a lot. You have no idea, Alex. I yeah. mean, that, if BlackBerry does extensive research with everything, all their products, software development, and everything, they would not come out with a classic unless it was like extreme in the extreme demand, and it's an investment on their part, and they, it's just something that they have to do. I know when it first came, um, the idea of the classic, everyone's like, "Why are they going back? Yeah. Why are they going back?" It's like, look how many people. Look at the, the the millions of people still on the you know the old legacy, uh, legacy devices. You know, it's a huge gray area. We're we're on the BB10 area, and there's just like this huge that they gotta make a transition somehow, some way. Yeah. What better way to do it than with the classic? You get the both, right. you know, the best of both worlds. Yeah, they, need, so they, they need to do like some kind of promotion. It's like yeah. drop, you know, extend your legacy. Right. With the with the classic, you know, trade I in wish, your device. And I wish BlackBerry uh, blog. I wish they would do like videos, you know, um, not just blogs, you know, stating uh, or kind of giving like examples and tips and hints and things of that nature. Like when the classic drops, I hope they really give a video. That is geared more towards the BBOS uh, d device users, and it is going to allow them to, you know, really see what the classic is for, and really give them that transition from uh, BBOS to BlackBerry 10. Because um, as soon as they announced the classic, I said that's their step right there for those BBOS users to make that transition. So. Yeah, you're totally right. They it's called they need to jab 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 right hook. The right hook is the sale. Jab jab jab. They're just giving out all the free information. Like here are some tips and tricks, and they're trying to get you to follow the blog. Right. And then it's like they want to save this moment for boom passport classic. Check this out. You want this? You yeah. Know. Look yeah. at my new yeah. HD screen. It's one by one, but you're still gonna want it. <laughs> yeah. So what's interesting to note is that uh, we're all talking about the the classic and the passport now which both have keyboards, and when you think about it, I remember reading that they, were, they weren't even planning to release the Q10 originally, that it was going to be, that they were just planning to have the entire BB10 OS on touchscreen, and when you look back on it now, and you look 
look at now all these devices coming out and, and experiences like what Alex is having or even personal experiences of my own where I find people don't want to upgrade to a touch screen. They want a, a keyboard still. It's, yeah. uh, it's interesting how, how sometimes you know, that perspective of what the market wants and what needs gets changed be between companies and between CEOs. Mark, Cuban, Mark, see, yeah. Mark, Mark Cuban put out a tweet today. He's like, the only reason BlackBerry is still alive is because of the keyboard. And while I think mm -hmm. that's a little bit like, a little bit brash, mm -hmm. I kind of have to agree. It's like, yeah. it comes well, down to, it comes down to, yeah, we, we talked about this, Jube, you know, as a read it, held up both devices, you know? Yeah, because uh, you, you know this. I don't know if the other guys do, but I was working on production on a show for the Food Network um, with host Ty Pennington, who everyone knows from Extreme Makeover. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we talked about, and the guy uses a Q10. And when he pulled it out, I, I, was, I was actually surprised that he even had one. But I asked him, I was like, why do you, what's with the BlackBerry 10? Just out of curiosity, it's like nothing beats communication than a BlackBerry. I mean, I need that physical query to email and stuff. And so I did update his device and I gave him some uh, <laughs> hints and stuff. Awesome. Which I'll cover hopefully in the next conduit. Mm -hmm. uh, get into that, but um, yeah, Brandon is absolutely right. James, you're absolutely right. I mean, that QWERTY is clutch. I know that Chen came in and he said that's a defining characteristic for a BlackBerry device, and mm -hmm. I think the me media will have you believe otherwise. Like, oh, no one uses QWERTY anymore, and it's not true. It's a flat-out lie. There's mm -hmm. a millions of people out there that rely on the QWERTY physical device to get... You know, I, I, I absolutely agree with you, Jube. What people don't get is that when you're on an iPhone and you're using the keyboard, half of your screen is gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you lost all that real estate that you bought into. Yeah, it's yeah. great for movies. Yeah, it's great for words with friends, but like that's not important at all. <laughs> it's like what it comes down to is really like what the Passport is going to be able to offer us is going to be literally the best of all three worlds. People want the trackpad. Got it. People want the keyboard. Got it. People want the big screen. Got it. And they want you're actually the you're getting more effects. screen real estate. You're getting yeah. more because look at the passport keyboard. That's a perfect example you're bringing up. The keyboard is only like that tall, and you can't mirror that on a virtual keyboard because buttons that small on a virtual keyboard they would not work. So you're actually getting more screen real estate using a passport. I mean, aside from it being wide, even just height wise, you're getting more real estate than you are on other. No, the typo, the typo keyboard for the iPhone is just a testimony in itself of just letting you know that those users, the iOS users, who were former BlackBerry users, they really desire that. I, you okay over there, Jubei? I'm okay. Everyone watching, I live in New York. My window's up, so if you hear gunshots, if you hear sirens, or... it's the sound of the police. In my... yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. here, don't get alarmed. No, I was trying to keep a straight face, and I just seen him look up, like make sure he's okay. I was like, oh, like guys, I gotta run. Company. Jubei's looking around like, is this me? Is this my emergency or someone else's? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, that was great. That was great. Speaking well, of emergency? speaking of emergency, though, like the passport's just going to be that device. I mean, you, I find it funny that on the BlackBerry blogs they came out and said the biggest battery of any mobile device. <laughs> and it's like, bro, there's like devices like two years ago that had a bigger battery. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you have it. I'd rather you lie to me and mark it than <laughs> well, not mark it at all. Does. Right. Doesn't Apple mm -hmm. do that? They just make outrageous claims <laughs> and they just stand there <laughs> and they just say, "Prove us wrong," because we we know you won't. Exactly. You know, like it, it, it sounds good. It sounds good. More, more people take pictures of the iPhone than any other device in the That's world. That's impossible, right? How, how can you, you know, how can you quantify that? Like, where's where's the evidence for any of this? Like, no one's ever gonna no, tell. No, that means that they're looking at everyone's pictures. Security flaw. Mm -hmm. Alex, you got a show to watch? <laughs> I actually do. Can you hurry up? <laughs> Alex is out of here. In like two minutes, guys. <laughs> anyway, so let's move on a little bit from the Telus news and the Rogers and Bell news. Let's move on to Twitly. This is a new application from our favorite third-party uh, hacker, a uh, developer, uh, Nemery. <laughs> He's done a great job of bringing us a lot of native experiences for both Snap2 Chat, Spot2 Fi. He's all over Beta Zone. He's now going against the top contenders out there with native third-party developers of Black. And even the Twitter for BlackBerry app, which is mm -hmm. phenomenal and built in-house, um, 
he's shown off a little bit of the UI. It seems that he's just built a tighter, more integrated uh, Twitter client. Has any of you guys seen it? Any of you guys interested in it? And would you pay for it? Considering yes. you, you've probably paid for it black already. Yes, I have not used this app whatsoever. Um, I'm really kind of like tired of these. Twitter they kind of get the same. <laughs> yeah, they kind of get the like. Same. There's enough Twitter clients. Like, I'm sorry, but I mean, yes. like, there's. I mean, like, there's always room, I guess, for improvement when it comes to Twitter clients, but I mean, like, is there, like, I'm just wondering, because I don't, I don't really use Twitter too often, but from some of you guys who use Twitter, you know, on a daily basis or very frequently, how how much of a need is there for a, an even tighter Twitter experience than what Black already provides? Yeah. Some of my friends can't use Black. They have to use the native one. They There's something, like, Little tiny features you'd never think about are missing from Black, but yeah. hardcore Twitter users they notice it. I hey. can't know what it is. Hey, Kev. Kev. How you doing, Kev? No, oh, what's the good word, fellas? How you doing? Ah, it's so weird. You're so far away now. No, man. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> not within fisticuffs range, you know. <laughs> right. It's, it's weird. weird. You're, you're here as Alex's relief. He's probably gonna dip out soon, so you can catch his one once a year show. Wow. <laughs> what are we talking about right now? Twitly. 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 I want. Like, like never, never really lives yeah. like up the street. Like I gotta get him over, do some kind of hands-on for yeah. readers out there. Like he's, he's, right. he's such a talented uh, developer. He he makes really beautiful apps. He like the functionality is great. It's really good. He just needs to to work on his app naming and you know maybe icon selection. He needs to hire a lawyer. That's what he needs to do. Straight up, honestly, if like if I had those skills, like just just change the name, man. Change the change the logo, and you stand out. Um, you want to stand out. And that's right. basically what it comes down to. You're that talented. Why? Go on, other anybody else's kind of coattails for that. that what I would, what I would do if I had that talent, and, and I do not, like I, I absolutely do not, is <laughs> I would build one client that taps all of those other social sites, and it's like this is my own thing. Yeah, I'm hacking your API. Yeah, yes. I'm doing this and that. Yes. But I'm not, I'm not taking your branding. I'm not doing anything like that. Bring social feeds back to BlackBerry 10. Do what Quick Post did for that segment of social feeds, and bring in the rest. Uh, he can make a really awesome app that just does does a little bit of Twitter, a little bit of Snapchat, a little bit kind of Instagram. Kind of like Hootsuite, kind of like a Hootsuite. Type yeah, absolutely, yeah. like yeah. just like that, where you can you know get get a broader sense of those social applications from a utility perspective, not necessarily from a consumption perspective. So mm -hmm. even of the third party clients, though, like whatever happened with Uber Social? Because I think if Uber Social did make a native app for BlackBerry 10, there would be a lot of downloads for that. Because I know with my BlackBerry uh, legacy uh, device, like, I did use, I use nothing but that. <laughs> like, Uber Social is still, it's just a, it's a legend in the game for BlackBerry users. But I would love to see a native version for BlackBerry 10 devices. I really would. And, I don't know. I mean, it's just it's hard because with with black black just gives you it, it's Twitter, but it gives you a whole other type of uh, experience with the UI and, and and whatnot. And um, you know, definitely done a good job with the app and the development. But uh, I would love to see Uber Social bring a native app to the library too. I mean, I'd be down. Let's get Nemory on it. He's built like everything else. <laughs> He saw Uber. He saw Uber because you were just talking about Uber Social. He just saw Uber with the taxi service put out a public API. He's like, "Get ready!" <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> all right." Kev, how many how many BlackBerry 10 devices did we see in Disney? Disney? <laughs> well, I, you only saw me rocking maybe uh, two at most because um, my Z30 that I, my Frankenberry is is still not up and running. It's pieced together. Everything's there. It's ready and waiting, but uh, that motherboard is not. It's not working with me just yet. <laughs> Did you just call it a Frankenberry? That's hilarious. Frank, Frank the Frankenberry. Frank yeah. the, think, the Franken 30. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think Chad dubbed it that way first, so I got to give it to him. Uh, but uh, I'm happy. I just got Chad? the uh, the 10.3 mm -hmm. loaded up on uh, on the Z10, and it's still uh, it's barely lost any juice whatsoever, and I haven't even reset it yet, so. It's so, awesome. I'm I'm liking the 10.3 build. It's it's ironic because really this thing was pulled from a production server 
likely it's a Passport OS that's just been kind of auto-loaded to our devices. So yeah. it's just interesting. <laughs> it's interesting in the grand scheme that, like, this is never meant to be in our hands, yet it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, it's, smooth. it's so smooth. Like, it's it's probably like this. This leak is probably the smoothest uh, BlackBerry 10 OS I've ever used. Like, even smoother than 10.0, which was which didn't have half as much, uh, half as many features. This is just like so smooth going in and between chats and the hub. It's crazy. That sounds promising to me because I've yet to really delve into all of this. So, dude, I find myself picking up my phone just to play with it again. Like you know, when you first got your BlackBerry 10 device and you'd find excuses to pick it up to play with it, I'm doing that now with the leak, and that's a good sign, I think. So you guys have it all on like test devices, right? On the uh, yeah, my Dev C. Yeah. My yeah. BlackBerry swag given from James. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Whoop whoop whoop. <laughs> Tasty <laughs> ice water. Representing, no, yeah. I, I had I had a really good time, Kev, meeting you, and, and I'm sure you both had a great time at Disney. So I'm just I'm just super pleased that uh, you got to come down here, and we have to finally meet. I mean, it's been That's years. Cool. Been it's years. funny. I, it's funny I get to meet James before I meet <laughs> Jubei. What's going on, man? Right, my, my fellow Y'all... Mets fan over here, a hop, skipping, and jumping away, and I, I gotta I gotta get in touch with you sometime. <laughs> All right now. <laughs> like I'm there. I'll bike. I'll be there in a second. <laughs> we should all do a New York meetup because it's close enough for for the Toronto boys. Uh, I'd be down. I'd be so down Just about, about that. The, yeah, it's close enough for Alex to go down. I could probably pick him up on the way. We can do a caravan. Cause Alex doesn't have a driver's license yet. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want. You don't want to use about me. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is like tuned out, so we can make fun of him. We'll just no. leave him in there. Are you talking about me going to to meet Brandon up and go to Rim? Nope. Oh, that, we, we can do that, too. But oh, we're talking man. about how we should do, like, a meetup in New York, and then, like, I'll pick you up on the way. Hell, the yeah. People. We'll go, we'll do, like, a caravan type of thing. Let's do it. I'm going to fly to Toronto and then carpool with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but So let's move on to our next topic point here. We have John Chen and Prem Watts are ranking among the top ten most powerful Canadian business people. Uh, actually, Prem came in higher than Chen at number six, and then uh, Chen came in at number eight. Really positive recognition. Chen is is, is C- California based, from what I understand. So it's kind of interesting that he's making the Canadian most powerful business people. Um, I don't know if he's there permanently, you know, working over in, in Waterloo or or over at headquarters in Ottawa. But what do you guys think thus far with that kind of announcement? Do you think it's positive to sh- at least for Canadian pride, so to speak? I think it's good because um, it, it speaks it speaks to his like him getting into the news into a positive light. I mean, I can guarantee the majority of people who knew about BlackBerry when Thorsten was around didn't know about Thorsten Hines as being the CEO. I think that was mostly if you if you knew about BlackBerry and you were into the BlackBerry news, you knew about Thorsten. But I think for for the common people that just knew about BlackBerry, they didn't really know the CEO. I think now, I talk to friends and family members about BlackBerry, and they're like, oh, that CEO, John Chen, said this thing and stuff. So I think he's definitely getting into the light there, and I think he's doing a lot of positive things, and I think it's being noticed by people. I think um, in terms of him being California-based, I think he mentioned before that he's uh, still staying in California, but he's... He's coming back and forth between Waterloo and California to delegate work. And, he's, and, and he's not using the corporate jet because Thorsten sold it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just be aware. Anyway, we're going to hop over to Alex right now. He's got some screens to share. Let me lock him on here. This is the BlackBerry Con, the P9983, the next Porsche device. Very interesting device. It actually has the glass weave back that we have on the Z30 and the Q10. Alex is zooming in on it there. It does have the HDMI out. It has the Porsche stainless steel badge up at the top. Surprisingly, it's based off the specifications of a classic, but it looks a lot like a Q10 in the sense that it does not have a trackpad. So very interesting device. I think this is going to be really hot. To be quite honest, I want this, mainly because it's a classic with a, you know, with, without the trackpad, and it just mm-hmm. gives you a gorgeous-looking feel, a removable battery. And I don't know if you see the dual... Uh, 
camera and LED there on the back on the right side as well. What do you guys think of the device design? N4BB actually leaked this out last, uh, you know, earlier in the week. Would you guys, if you had the $2,000, spend it on a device like this, or would you spend it on four Z30s? <laughs> Why are you showing me pictures of things I'm never going to touch? I'm never even going to be in the presence of James. Come on. No, well, I did get a chance to. Um, uh, sorry, folks. I I, I did get a chance to fool around with the Porsche uh, Z10 uh, version. Um, it's a very nice Italian, you know, back leather. It had that nice, um, you know, stainless steel uh, bezel around the device. And I said to myself, you know, if money wasn't a thing, I would totally own this. And looking at the uh, the con, I definitely would buy it. If money wasn't a thing, I totally buy it. I mean, it has a little bit bigger screen. It has that huge memory, 64 gigs. It's got you know a little bit better, uh, you know RAM and um, you know that 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 actual uh, keyboard there is sort of like a blend between uh, what we know on the Q10 and the Passport. Very interesting. To see, I, I like to see you know run my thumbs on on it and see how that uh, how that works tactically off my fingers. But yeah, I, I, looks great, man. I, I was just watching. Uh... Jack Ryan, uh, like uh, what is Shadow that? Crew, yeah, Shadow yeah, Recruit. and and they had the 9981 in that film, yeah. dope. So, um, I have a feeling we're gonna see this one in a lot of upcoming films. I think it's kind of like, uh, like late, definitely for its arrival. I, I feel like it should have came out like months ago, <laughs> if not like shortly after the Q10's release. Um, but you know, to me, I feel like. You know, the, the specs are, are good. You know, you're getting the three gigs um, of RAM. You're getting a lot of internal memory, um, you know, 1.7. I mean, it, it's it's cool, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of with you, babe. If money wasn't a thing, then, yeah, I'd probably just get it. But, you know, even if I had, like, a couple stacks to burn, nah, I wouldn't buy it. It's just not worth it to me. I'd buy one to sell to some du Dubian. Is that how you say that? <laughs> Dubian? Is that, I'm, I'm probably messing this up horribly right now. We're Dubian. Probably, uh, Dubian. <laughs> Dubian, Dubi, Dubious. But anyway, I'd buy one just to, to resell it for obviously an exorbitant price for, for increase. So 3.5 inch touchscreen like the classic. This one has 3 gigabytes of RAM and it, the Z, Z30 core, uh, CPU and of course 64 gigabytes. Can we give, can we give a small clap to BlackBerry for putting 32 standard on the passport? I'm I'm, I'm impressed about that. Instead of a 16, I'm uh, I'm happy about that. Alex, can, can we switch over here really quick? Let's see um what we're kind of talking about the passport again. Let's talk about the pro receiver and see what's going on with that. Oh. So, Bam, right there we have the BlackBerry, uh, BlackBerry Passport will be the only device to feature natural sound pro receiver real-time ear adaptation. More or less you're going to get the same experience that you have with BBM video on Z30s with natural sound on any type of phone call on the, the Passport. So it's bringing in the natural sound, utilizing all of the microphones to make sure that you get a full range of audio sound. And you can see the comparison there between Skype, FaceTime, and of course, a uh, pro voice. And again, you have the narrow, wide, and pro voice bands. It's getting you a full range of spectrum audio. Um, I'm super excited about this. I can imagine the Passport being a major conference call type device. And having this ability was just going to be such a big boon for them. What do you guys think about this subtle refinement on the BlackBerry Passport? And would you like to see it on future BlackBerry devices? I, I love it, and I think it needs to be on every single high-end BlackBerry device. You know, it's just one of their main staples. It's always been about communication. This should just be one of the givens. It's just on the device at all times to make it stand out from everything else. Um, I again, they just refining what's already a premium product. I think they are uh, just polishing it up appropriately for the medical and for the enterprise. Um, I did read an article, and I can't remember where it was. Uh, that they said that the passport has a potential to revolutionize boardroom meetings. And um, obviously with the ability of, uh, you know, protected and uh, its integration with everything on BEZ, BEZ 12, that's going to be uh, coming out. You know, we're looking at something that uh, could very well do that. Alex, let's, sh let's show the 60% larger screen capacity because we're, we're still talking Passport here. I found this article very interesting from the guys at N4BB. Essentially, if you look at a book, 
normally, left to right, you get about 66 characters per line. And while Alex lays this out for us, you can see that the Passport is really designed to be uh, an astute reading device, be it working through Excel spreadsheets, reading websites. It's got such a great aspect ratio to give you a full breadth of characters. So on a book, you get normally about 66 on average. Passport, you're going to be getting 60 characters across. And on a device like an iPhone or even an S4 or 5, you're getting about 40 characters across. Again, changes the whole landscape of what you can offer. You can see at, right there on the right-hand side that websites don't need to go into their mobile responsive look. You can actually go over and look directly at a full website in all its glory. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited to see what the browser experience is on the Passport. Do you guys think this will be a value add to you in your daily life? What about you, Darius? I know you're holding out for a Passport. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, I mean... It this this here is just um, this is definitely one of the highlights that BlackBerry wanted to make. They wanted to make sure that you were able to get more real estate in terms of uh, you know making those emails happen, messaging, um, and even just web browsing. So this is something they definitely wanted to tap on. But it also goes kind of hand in hand when I was mentioning uh, you know previous upstreams uh, with them really taking the time and really focusing and, and taking. The, the tablet, the term phablet serious and really just uh, emphasizing on what its everyday use should be. Should be. Not in terms of its length, but let's widen it. You know, let's let's give it to the people how they should have had it all along. This is one of those things where people would do and they'd be like, oh, we didn't get it right the first time, but the second or third iteration they do. No, this is something that Blackbird got right the first go around. So when you possibly get that second iteration of the passport, it's going to be that much better. So uh, this I is something what, that... Darius, I had the chance to play with it a little bit. Yeah. I man. You got something to look forward to, that's certain. <laughs> oh, I cannot. Please, just stop. Darius <laughs> <laughs> there there has been feeling every day of waiting man. for this. Nice. You don't understand. Like I, it's just this. I have the money that I have set aside for this device is burning. The, I got, I gotta buy new pants because it's just burning a hole. In the <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand? Like it's, funny. it's nuts. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting device overall. I mean, as as a writer myself or a blogger, or whatever, uh, you know, I just find the productivity that I'm gonna be able to get from it astounding. It's really, I, I'm interested almost in a classic device because I want a trackpad. I want to be able to just fire out a really specific email and, and, and get things done. And right. while I can do that, of course, on a Z30, it does take me a little bit longer to go back and refine what I've said, make the edits, put in the punctuation, etc. On iPhone, it's like that doesn't even exist anymore. And it makes me wonder, like, have we dumbed down our society so much with iPhones that people think autocorrect is like actual language? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty bad. Like, there's no punctuation, just words cobbled together. In, in useless paragraphs. Oh, you know me, James. I'm, you know, I'm a writer, and that's why I hold on to my, you know, my, you know, my Q10 because I actually take the time to actually put punctuation and spell out everything. And no shortcuts for me. And it's like, it's like with a passport, it's like the shortcuts are built in. You know, they're part of the whole experience. Yeah. You're gonna be able to get the the really quick synergistic keyboard, uh, ex you know, extensions right there on the touch sensitive uh, keyboard. Um, Alex, let's move over to the full spec sheet of the passport, if you would. Bam, he has it ready. Look at this. This is why I don't do these things. Because Alex, <laughs> Alex is way better at it. I'd be fumbling around. So we're looking at the um, the eight twenty. Is it really two point two gigahertz? That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Adreno oh. three thirty three gigabytes of RAM, thirty two flash memory, expandable. Past 128, it's gonna yeah. be freaking awesome. 150 gigs on one device, like that's incredible. Yeah, I was kind. I thought they were gonna run with the 805, um, so I was kind of surprised that they did stick with the 800. Um, I was really hoping the 805, you know, kind of get that 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 bit of a boost, bit more of a boost. Um, but you know, I mean, I'm completely content with the you know 800. So yeah, I just hope that. Because I and I've been looking at you know Qualcomm's uh, processor, so hopefully if BlackBerry does you know move forward with the all touch devices and they kind of go with the 64 bit architecture chips, that we'll see that the, the uh, Snapdragon 808 and or 810 
uh, processors in those devices, but I think the 800 is going to get the job done nonetheless, like, without a doubt. One thing I do want to mention here while we're looking at the spec sheet is that under the sensors, it mentions something called time of flight. I got a lot of BBMs, a lot of tweets asking what the hell is time of flight. If you look it up, it's from the biggest uh, chip manufacturer over in Europe. BlackBerry's been working with them since the launch of BlackBerry 10 on different aspects of the devices. On this one, the time of flight sensor is more or less an advanced proximity sensor. You'll notice across the whole spec sheet you don't see proximity sensor because they've actually replaced it with this time of flight sensor. And the time of flight sensor essentially allows the device to tell via time how far light is away from the device. So a proximity sensor actually works by measuring the amount of light coming in. So if the phone is next to your ear, no light is really getting in, so obviously I can turn the screen off. With time of flight, it's a little bit different, and you're actually able to manage not only how far you are away from the device, but also other devices by a proximity, and measuring the time distance between the light exchange between those devices. Overall, if they were to really, really push on this technology, they could create some awesome experiences. If you think about those concepts that we saw on the playbook from Confetti, where they had an overhead camera looking down to manage a bunch of different playbooks, with the time of flight sensor, you could arguably put a bunch of passports together, and those devices know specifically where each other device is and coordinate things across the screens. So overall, I, you know, we don't know to what extent it's being used on the passport or all, even on the OS at this time, but definitely interesting that they're using some pretty uh, innovative technology. As well as part of this, N this uh, N4BB spec sheet, they're also bringing in Gorilla Glass for the the passport device. And if you actually if you compare that to the Sapphire Glass, which is going to be on the iPhone uh, 6 6L or whatever, um, it's actually pretty pretty consistent. It's more or less about the same kind of quality and uh, endurance. So yeah. overall, this this device is going to be awesome. Definitely a contender for you know, as Jubei said on previous upstream, the most innovative device of the year. So okay. who I I, I want a quick rundown in this group. Alex, we'll start with you since you're a little bit uh preoccupied. Are you moving to a passport next? Is that your next BlackBerry 10 device, or are you satisfied with your Z30? I'm currently satisfied with my Z30, and the thing that I might end up moving to a passport might simply be based off the fact that a lot of my family is currently on Z10s, and my brother, if he starts getting frustrated with the Z10 rather than him ever switch to Android or anything like that, I'll be like, dude, no, 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 here, you can have my Z30 and I'll buy a Passport. So I'm kind of, like, waiting for that. Otherwise, I'm just gonna... brother, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> so so you're waiting for someone to be dissatisfied with the Z10. With their Z10. Um, and if they're dissatisfied, first I'm going to put 10.3 on it, and then if they're still, like, dude, battery life, I can't handle it, my brother's starting to get at that point, then I might just be like, just try out the Z30, and I'll yeah. get a Passport. I feel for I'll, it, man. I'll, I'll use your upgrade for you. I'll pay. You can have my pass, or you can have my Z30. That's kind of like the negotiation I have. I'll use your update. So, and it's it's a Chad in our group. Is you know he's he loves his Z10. He's got it decked out with different you know skins from deep brands and all that. But he still is you know the pain point for him is the battery life. And I'm hoping with 10.3.1, which will have device specific hardware optimizations, that it'll it'll finally get to a point where you know this thing can last. 10 hours for you, reasonably so. So, uh, what about you, Brandon? Are you looking at a passport? Is your Z30 enough? Or you, you've mentioned previously that you're you're, you're an all-touch guy. Yeah, I'm not really like I'm, like I'm excited for the passport just so I get the opportunity to like go to a store or something or play with it and see what it's all about. But uh, I'm probably not gonna upgrade to a passport. I'm probably gonna wait for. For whatever the next touchscreen device is in 2015. Darius, what about you? You you've been on the borderline here. You've got a Z10. I know, I know a, a passport. I mean a, a Z30 at the right price. Yeah. You'll be you'll be right there. So oh, yeah, no. I mean I am definitely all touch. I'm over excited for the passport. Um, I will be definitely getting the next all touch device that you know BlackBerry does come in the clutch with, but uh. I'm definitely going to be getting a passport. You know, me personally, I just, I've had my Z10 now for a little over a year, so I'm definitely due for a new device. I'm just, I, I get a new device every year. So, you know, being 
I got back. I was in Korea for a year. Um, I got back in 2000, June of 2013. As soon as I touched down, like as soon as I touched down, I went to an at t store and picked up my Z10. Um, and I've been on every since. So now it's just it's time for another device. And you know, the closer we get, the more anxious I am. I'm ready for it, but I'm also just excited, you know, that the Passport does have that Gorilla Glass because the Z10 is a fingerprint magnet. So hopefully the the, the Gorilla Glass will kind of help solve that problem a bit more. Bro, just just wash your hands. Like I'm just I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the lotion, man. It's the lotion, all right. Lo- Got to keep that ashiness away. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin, what about you? You've got both the Z10 and a Q10. What's next for you? Uh, and the Franken 30. Don't and the Franken Frank 30. 30. That's um, right. You do have the Franken 30. I can't stop picking up Blackberries, man. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to wind up getting it. It's a, it's a revolutionary device. Um, I'm certainly going to be among one of those those people just picking it up. You know, if I waited in line, like the, there wasn't an actual line for the Z10, <laughs> but I was there bright and early, first person over in... Uh, it was Connecticut over in Stanford to go pick up one of these bad boys. So I did that. Um, certainly going to be bound to do that with a passport too. It's just, it's a lot easier. It's going to be even, um, you know, even more more motivation to, to get things done on that type of a device as opposed to having to wait to get home, to get on the laptop, to do something else. You know, it, it makes it a lot easier for me. And, so even, when, and, 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 even, and even when you get home to your laptop, you're going to have BlackBerry yeah. blend. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna exactly. So I'm I'm not even really gonna be too concerned about this Mac anymore. So right, right, amen right. to that. So you you had mentioned you know you you're looking at a passport. Do you think that's gonna curb your sure press love? Do you think that's gonna be enough to see so, to satiate you, or do you no. still want it back? <laughs> no, I said it's a, you know it needed it need work for, you know for certain aspects and the way that the OS is gonna work out, but. Um, no, I still love that type of technology. I'm I'm a I'm a geek when it comes to that type of stuff, man. Anything innovative like that, um, sign me up any day of the week. I'll, I'll gladly take that. And Jupe, what about you? You've got a Q10 right now. You've held a passport already. Probably the only one in this group to ever do so. Um, <laughs> is that is that guaranteed your next device, or are you thinking all touch? I mean, you kind of uh, mentioned already that you like the proficiency of a keyboard. Yeah, I mean, uh, a few months ago, I was looking forward to the classic. Um, nothing about the classic uh, thus far has excited me. Um, the passport, I think, definitely snuck up on everybody. Just the sh- you know, just the it just surprised everyone and the media how great that device is. And fooling around with it, I thought about it, but I think uh, my next device is going to be the Porsche, Con. Oh. <laughs> so what do you think about money? Okay. Okay. Hey, I'm done. He just slid it in. in. I'm actually gonna uh, go with the Porsche Con. I'm, a, I'm actually getting the 3.5 inch two thousand dollar device. You should have just like closed your lab, like just close the computer, and just, close like, the like, just like that. <laughs> just walk out the room. You're done. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get the Porsche. So. Let's let's close up here. We've got maybe about six minutes left before I want to close this this thing out here for our upstream number eleven. Anyone on the ten point three OS? And again, this was on production servers. So like, there's there's one thing about a leak. It's like this was pulled directly from a carrier. This was available in the Sach is it Sachisai? How do you, does anyone know how to pronounce that? Sachisai. Uh, I don't know. Jesse. No clue. Everyone Jesse. said something different. It's the highest Well, one, that program recently got updated today, so you may want to download the new update for it. And two, um, the 10.3 OS that we're running right now, I, I found has been remarkably s- snappy, quote unquote. I know that's that's no descriptive term at all. Don't get sued. O- <laughs> overall, <laughs> have you guys had a consistent experience with it? Has it been a, a valuable addition for you to bring onto your OS, or or do you feel any kind of qualms and want to move back to what was? You give me the latest build any day. <laughs> 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 latest build any day. I want to play with uh, all the quirks, whatever's going on in the device. It's it's just that much better, and you get that much more interest in picking up the device. Like Alice was saying, he's he's happy about picking up the the devices all over again. Hey Kevin, oh. do you have it? Do you have 10.3 on all your devices right now? Uh, I downloaded them all. I was trying to get it done before I, I jumped on with you guys, so that, that was my reason for being a tad bit tardy here. But um, no, I, I have it on uh, just on the Z10 right now, up and running, and I'll be loading it up on the Q10 right after. So 
Okay. I try with the 30, and it, it still is just doing this fantastic blinking sequence, which is telling me that the battery is dead. So, yeah. no bueno. No bueno yeah. for me. It doesn't accept an autoloader or anything like that? No. Well, it, it takes the load. It goes on there, and it, it looks like it puts the, the operating system right on there quick. Um, and then it just shows the, uh, the you know, word, the BlackBerry logo for, you know, about half the time that it would normally do it. And then it goes right back to the yellow light for one sec. goes right back to the blinking, you know, one long blink and then six flashing uh, demonic red blinks. That's, a, that's, a, that's a definitely a motherboard <laughs> issue. So Blackberry, red from Black, BlackBerry employees who may watch this later... We need mm -hmm. C we need CFP on Mac, please. <laughs> oh so man, Kevin, you know you can bring that up. Yeah. And, yeah, they'll uh, do that just for me. <laughs> no. yeah. Because yeah. I'm I, I only have a Mac computer and I needed it for uh, you know on my Q10 and I had to go through extreme measures just to get you know 10.3 on my uh, on my device and obviously the auto loaders uh, auto -lo uh, loaders weren't going to help and had to use a chassis and had to. Um, you know, get the, the brick file, had to split it, had to extract apps, I had to eliminate some of the files from there and just, you know, put it all in one directory and it was just such a headache. Someone yeah. feels my pain. See, I don't even have it loaded because I, I was trying to actually get boot camp uh, downloaded on my um, Mac. Oh, oh right. my God. You know, legally, I was actually trying to, like, find a, a DMG file offline and the one I did, it, it was, like, not working because I actually have, like, 10.10. .10. Uh, beta OS mm -hmm. uh, of Yosemite on my MacBook, so I haven't found a you know a compatible boot uh, camp file to work with it. So unfortunately, I can't use it. But uh, tomorrow I may I may hinder upon something. <laughs> tomorrow is a new day. <laughs> it, is. it is. What is Alex trying to show us there? Because we're talking about ten point three, and I I just wanted to bring up that there's some consistency going on here with the signature action on BlackBerry 10.3, which I'm sure any of you guys who have downloaded it, you notice. Um, I'm trying to get... Here's a good picture. Oh, my God. So, clearly spelled secondary wrong. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Go yeah, so, out the spoon. So, yeah, 10.3, they, they have this big button that sticks out. This is essentially what they want you to do when you get on the page. Um, it's pretty much consistent across apps. And now let's take a look at Android L and what they're doing. They have this floating action that is a way different color than the rest of the app, too. It's here, mm -hmm. when you scroll down, it gets static there. There's this consistency now where, you know, with these Android L, which is coming out, BlackBerry 10 actually had this idea, you know, before they were working on it. It seems like it's cool because there's this cons consistency being brought on now where people will get used to the signature action, and then hopefully if 10.3 or if it's 10.4, once it's able to run the Android L runtime, we're already used to these signature actions, mm -hmm. and it's we're, we're going to have a similar kind of signature action. They might call it something different, but we're going to have a signature action within Android apps too, and I, it's just, I just love this from a design perspective. Like It's just consistency, you know? It's an awesome point you made, Alex. It's just, that is really like attention to detail and um, you know, there's not with everyone kind of going with the flat design all the way across the board, and it's, you know, with BlackBerry 10, you know, 10.3 going that way, and then you have the Android L design, material design, and how they're going to coincide one another. It's definitely going to correlate in, in, in a positive notion, but, um, you know, it's one thing just to think, you know, how all these, you know, uh, developers for the companies, how they think. And that's why I'm, I'm very, very much anxious of who's going to be the first to step out and change that whole aspect and what it's going to look like. Um, I know we debated before, and James has mentioned that, you know, Windows is actually, with the Metro look, is actually like the very first flat design look. Then Apple takes it on. And then now BlackBerry and, and Android, you know, pretty much at the it, same it, time. It, it, I don't want to inter interject here too much, but... When I I'm gonna get off Alex because it's probably <laughs> just his face. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> we get to watch you watching something else. Anyway, um, if you look at the 10.3 UI and you look very very closely, it's not very flat. You know, I was one of those guys out there like, oh, it's gonna be flat. It's gonna be flat. But really, if you look at it, there are very subtle gradients still. If you look in the hub, for instance. As you scroll, the top of the action bar is actually semi-translucent, and then it gets to a full actual color. So it's just very subtle things that they've done. And again, the hiding away of the UI elements and while you're scrolling and things like that, 
really detract from what kind of the flat UI is all about. It's almost as if they're kind of carving a new direction for it already. And Alex bringing up Android L is a good point that you know, as these OS kind of develop forward from a design perspective, BlackBerry 10 is right there on the cusp, ready to, you know, work and pivot with the rest of the market. Yeah. So I, I really think, it, uh, you know, we may see a change for BlackBerry where they update the OS maybe twice a year or maybe even once yearly. I but think it's definitely a positive position for them at this point. Yeah, that, that translu I think, you know, a translucent feature or a translucent UI is going to be the next big move. It's still going to have the flatter look. Um, but I think translucent, you know, is, is definitely going to have, you know, an effect on how the UI, future UIs will look on all these mobile OSs um, because it's a touristic look, so to speak. You know, we're, we're kind of, we've seen movies where you have kind of like the, you know, transparent phones and, you know, mobile devices and things of that nature. So, you know, of course, the software is always the first to kind of take the uh, first step to going towards um, the look of the future, so to speak, and then the hardware catches up. So I think that's going to be one of the next big things that we'll probably see going across the board is with translucent, um, you know, UI features. And it's and again, it's ironic. I, you know, I've always said BlackBerry has been early to the actual game, and it's mm -hmm. ironic because you know, translucent UI is what we have on BlackBerry Seven. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Please bring it back. I've said it. So much. It speaks, it speaks for itself, and I think for a lot of users, the white that's currently employed on the latest build is a little bit jarring, but I also think it's going to be a big value for them. Just to, as Jubei and I were kind of talking about this, that it's very clear and consistent what you're supposed to do in apps and, and why you're supposed to do them. I really think that as they, as they move this OS forward and unify these applications together, it's really just going to be such a valuable uh, operating system from a usability perspective there really is going to be so much that you can get done. And right now with the, even the release of 10.3 via the, uh, by this leak, uh, users are getting a, a really early sense of where BlackBerry is heading to make their OS more cohesive as a whole. Um, let's close on just some, some final thoughts on 10.3 and how you guys are liking it on your test devices. Yep. It's, a, it's really, like you said before, it's really snappy. Going into and out of uh, cards in the hub, super quick, rapid. Um, I found on 10.2.1, sometimes when you click certain uh, chats in the hub, it would take three to five seconds for maybe BBM chats to pop up. But in 10.3 in this leak, it's, it's instant like that. Also, I find group chats load a lot quicker. The, um, the, the two-finger swipe down from the top bezel within apps is great. Uh, for the settings. Apart from that, the virtual assist assistant is the most uh, impressive part of this build for me personally, being able to uh, search for restaurants, movies, and things like that. It, work it works really well. Boun leaps and bounds better than the previous voice uh, activation app that they had before. Yeah, voice control was very... Voice control. Voice control was very... Um, utilitarian, so to speak. This is much more broad and, and you know, a lot more open to the possibilities of what a voice assistant needs to be. Now, what we need is this BlackBerry assistant inside of our vehicles, and then we're, you know, then we're golden, or at least Bluetooth I've, connection. Have you used? Has anyone used it in a car? I, I have used it many, many times actually. Um, my buddy, I every time I go out and drive, I make a point to try and utilize it. So I hear my phone go off, and I actually, you know, I click on the mute button. I don't have to look at my phone when it does it. I say read last message. If it's a BBM, boom, it reads my last message or email or whatever, and then it lets me reply. I reply, and I said, you know, a paragraph sentence just because I wanted to try and see how how well it would understand me. And I noticed the previous voice assistant, it would mess up what I said a lot. And I'm like, do I speak weird or what? But this picks it up perfectly. And I, I, it's, it's nice to use, you know. I, I, I don't know. It's exciting. <laughs> it, it understands me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and you are mentioning in the hub, there's also an instant action feature within the hub. And that's in, like, the top right corner. So if you tap that, and they just brought productivity to a whole new level with this. Because if you have, say you're talking to three BBM chats at once, which is what I 
I do often, and what I was trying to do to make this work quicker is I would have a BBM chat opened up in the hub, I would have the BBM app opened, and I would be able to have two chats open at once, essentially. But with the instant reply feature, I can literally just tap the reply button, message someone back, tap the reply button, message back. I don't even have to jump in and out of the conversation. Mm -hmm. I can literally read the last message, reply to it without going in. And that's just a whole new level that I, I, they're just doing some really awesome stuff, innovative stuff. That's all I have to I say. Am, I, I am, <laughs> and drops, Mike. No, I'm absolutely excited for what they're building here. I mean, overall, the, the you know people are going to look at 10.3 as a UI update, but really it's so much more. They're building a lot of stuff in just to make things work together better. You go into the pictures app, now your photos are geotagged by time and you know, on a specific day, you can just press on one of the little media icons and be sent into Story Maker to automatically create a story about that day. There's a lot of just tiny things. The fact that you can save time shifts for editing later. Again, a huge addition. Small, but huge for us from a usability perspective. I'm really excited about 10.3. I appreciate having everyone on here today for our upstream number 11. We'll see you all next week. Did you have anything else you guys wanted to close with? Um, I did want to mention uh, D. Habkirk's, uh, you know, his, his channel. He he posted a uh, white keyboard, and which I would which I would thought was pretty dope. And I want it. when I seen it, I was like, whoa, that would be cool if we had the option to use a black and a white keyboard. But not only that, I was just thinking back on the tour devices with you know red accents. I was like, that would be really dope if you use like red or even yellow accents to change, like, hopefully we can see, like, future customization with the keyboards and later iterations of the OS. Even just for dark and light theme, I think that's a great addition. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think that's, that's that would be awesome as well. It's interesting because it, it, you still carry on that flat aesthetic that they're going for. You just right. give it a different, you know, you invert the color scheme. Yeah. It seems like something, that, like, you know, very simple, like, no nonsense well, to implement. Actually, to implement. I don't know, though. Thinking about it, the, the keyboard, you know how you can pull it up at any point in time? It's not app-specific. It if, if they did implement it, I think it would have to be a universal setting you choose. Yeah. It's going to be wired or dark. It, I don't think they can make it app-specific, thinking about it. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, you could do it based on if the app is in darker or bright theme. You would pull a different uh, keyboard asset. So if, yeah, it was a dark, if, it, if the app was placed in dark theme... It would pull the keyboard that's that's for the dark theme, and if like the whole OS is is bright theme, and all the other stuff, it would default to the bright theme keyboard. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a, it just comes down to again getting access to you know customization. That's really what everybody's really looking for. So even if you're altering the hues on it, whether it's just going to be you're talking just black and white type of keyboards. You can alter it to, to pretty much anything. I mean, there are a lot of those, you know, third-party keyboards out there on Android that, you know, offer all kinds of different options, and that's what a lot of people have been gravitating to. That's a very interesting to bring that up, Kev, because iOS and Android have both em embraced. I'm like slurring here, jeez. <laughs> I've both, em both embraced uh, third-party keyboards. Would you guys like to see that on future iterations of BlackBerry 10? Yes, we're waiting on Brandon and Alex yeah. to create it. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly just want to see them get more intuitive with their with their own customizations. They're getting there, you know. They're they're probably just testing the waters to see how how we dive into it. You know what our response actually is going to be. And me, I'm I'm all for it. Every little aspect of it, whether it's your wallpapers, you know, again, bring back the themes, that kind of concept. Those things were such a big hit with BlackBerry, and that's what people loved about it. So you know, one of the many things that people loved. I should correct myself there, but uh, I'm all for it, man. Bring it in. Well, I mean, it, it holds consistent with BlackBerry's always been known for their keyboards, right? Their physical keyboards. So if they actually don't give you the option, and they just that just shows that they are so confident that they have the best virtual keyboard, and I think that holds consistent with what they are. I mean, sure, obviously it would be great to bring in third-party keyboards, but even by them not doing it, it shows everyone else is letting you do it, but, you know, we still believe that we have the best keyboard out there. So it's also another kind of thing. No, no, I don't think people yeah. really want to change the keyboard. I think people just want to change, you the know, colors. The color, yeah, the colors <laughs> and accents. That's pretty much it. I, I, that's why I am such a full touch, you know, uh, the BlackBerry device user because I feel like the virtual keyboard is second to none. Like it is, I don't even think the Passports keyboard will beat the virtual 
key. At the at the same time, I would like to to mention that you know obviously BlackBerry Ten is much more than just a keyboard. When you think about a workplace, if you go into my office or probably any person's office, people have different keyboards depending on on how they type or whatnot. And so I, I personally think it's just it makes sense to allow third-party keyboards because you know. One keyboard doesn't necessarily jive with everyone. I mean, BlackBerry's already got the option to choose, you know, a physical keyboard or a virtual keyboard. But I don't see any reason why a third party opening up the keyboards to third parties like uh, like Minuum or some of the other ones that are available on Android and soon to, soon to be available on iOS eight, I believe. Um, yeah. I don't see any reason why those wouldn't, you know just further provide a good experience for BlackBerry users so that I mean, they can work how they want to work. To bounce right off of that, I mean, it took iOS eight years to do that. So <laughs> maybe maybe BlackBerry's like, yeah, we'll do it you know, down the line. And it's yeah. interesting as well because inside the Android runtime, you can set alternative keyboards. So it's like mm -hmm. you can kind of already have that experience. I can use Swipe on BlackBerry 10 when I'm yeah. in an Android app if I set it to be so. So overall, I mean, as you had mentioned, it's, is it, do they want to offer that flexibility at this time? Or as Alex said, do they want to keep proliferating the fact that they have the best-in-class virtual keyboard in the market right now? I think it's tough, too, to even implement it, though, because think about all the other operating systems. Can you pop up the Android and or um, iPhone keyboard up at any point in time? Because on BB10, you do both fingers swipe up from the bottom, and the keyboard comes up. It's like... It works absolutely everywhere. I don't even. I don't think Android and iOS even do that. Do they let you bring up the keyboard whenever? Or is that not a BlackBerry Ten only no, thing? No, but, but they would just make that a requirement if you want to put a keyboard onto BlackBerry Ten. It has to has to fit certain requirements, which can, probably one of them would be it needs to be built in a fashion that it could be called from, you know, from the assets to be brought up at whim. Yeah, there's yeah, there's some I, apps and some launchers in Android that allow you to just you know, implement your own gestures and you can command That's true. Okay. the action you want. So yeah. and, and I mean personally I think that like if Blackberry did open up the third party um, keyboards, I think they would come. I think third party keyboard developers would come just because it's it's different than I mean they are kind of like an app, but at the same time it's a bit different because it's I feel like Keyboard developers would be more inclined to provide their keyboards on a BlackBerry device. This, if, this if is this has been something I've wanted for a long time on BlackBerry 10, and and I guess the best way to call it is a plug-in. It's not yeah. an app. It's an extension of the OS experience, and and I agree that you know bringing in a third-party developer to to bring that kind of cohesive alternative in would be an incredible benefit for them. I would even pay for such a thing, you know. Absolutely. There's, a, there's definitely a market for it. And it's ironic because SwiftKey is probably the most popular third-party Android keyboard, and yet that same software is working underneath yeah. ours on the BB10 keyboard. Right. So, so, so again, it kind of goes back to where Alex is like, it's like, no, we've got the best-in-class keyboard because mm -hmm. we've got all of that already. Yeah. Anyway, That's cool. But, I think um, I mean, if you guys, I don't know what you guys feel, of talking about that, that aspect of maybe even be purchasing something like this, like that plug-in. The way BBM is working, you know, you have that, the, the whole shop, you can jump in there and pick up some, you know, fantastic features and aspects of, of the, that little messaging system. But with the keyboards, would any of you actually like to have any of the older style keyboards from, like, a replica of those style keyboards? Yes. Your old pearls, I, I, your old I'd store, love, I'd love a smiley old. face. I'd love a smiley face <laughs> keyboard. And you can implement classic. that easily in a virtual setting. You know, that that's one of the, the easier aspects of, of that type of an OS and the capabilities of this are, you know, Outweigh far far more than what the other options do, so uh, I, I'd love to see that. I would I would easily pay more than I've been paying for all these countless stickers. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Give me give me all those options. I I'd, I'd easily that that's one of the best things to customize with. You know, Wait, what would you use, Kevin? Would Which you, one would I use? Oh God, I'm probably. Press? Um, no. Well, you know, you had your sure type. So it's like the sure press. Uh, sure. There was a sure type. Well, sure press is just the screen itself, but I mean, yeah. sure type was the one where you had the two letters on there, and you know that that was beneficial in some aspects. Probably don't really need it now the way the OS works, but yeah. just the look and the feel of certain things, just the the swoop keyboards, the those curves and all, just different aspects. They were iconic, and I, I don't want to lose that that history that BlackBerry's got just for something that could easily be remedied. 
this this whole conversation we're having right now, we're almost talking about something like we're talking about plugins and add-ons. Like, do we feel the system is so like refined at this point that we're not? Think a year back, we were complaining about this app still junk because of this. Now we're talking about third-party keyboard. Like, this is a good sign, right? Absolutely. And absolutely. I mean, like, I do you guys feel like what do you think BlackBerry should start focusing on next? I mean, we're complaining about dark theme in the hub, which is coming, channels. but it's like there's so, yeah, yeah okay fix up channels that's a good yeah. but like what other things do you guys think? What does BlackBerry 10 need? I think they're pretty much getting to that level. Headless notifications for Android apps if they're gonna go all the way with having the Amazon App Store putting this emphasis on Android apps. I think having headless. Um, having Android apps have the ability to be headless and to put notifications into the hub um, with the app closed, I think that would, that's yeah. something else I would and, like to and see. It, and it somewhat does that, but it does it for system updates. Yeah. So it's a little bit inconsistent. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be like you're going to get your Instagram mm -hmm. like, like, oh, this person like this. Right? Yeah, exactly. But, but like, you know, if it's a pushed, like, you know, from the, like a game update, like, okay. That'll show up in the notification yeah. viewer, which is cool. So, like, Spotify, for me, I'll play it, and I'll actually have a card within the hub so I can press next, pause, play, etc. Mm -hmm. But it's not, um, you know, it's not still an, an active kind of push notification type thing. It's getting there. What I want at this point for BlackBerry 10, when we look forward, is I want them to look at innovation. I really want them to take the core competency of what they've done thus far with the OS and take it to the next level. It's like, all right. The table stakes are covered. Now let's kick the ass, you know? <laughs> let's show iOS and Android why they suck. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you mentioned that. I just uh, can't help but think about those old tat videos that we used to see on the capabilities of, uh, you know, the QNX platform, a mobile QNX platform. And, and, and it's like, where is this? You know, they showed some really awesome stuff, and maybe, you know, they're going to start bringing these uh, features slowly. I don't know, but that really encompasses what you mentioned innovation on a mobile OS they have it I mean they got the they got you know they got the right people in place they got the they got the right platform so they have all the tools and it's like they, they have the found they have the foundation of all of it you know it's mm -hmm. uh, it's ironic because you know we, we look at security as such a happenstance thing these days where it's something you can tackle on later. For, for added value, but you know, BlackBerry has it at the baseline of everything they do, and I think as we move forward with these mobile OS, that's going to be more and more important. You know, being able to have that end to end. Anyway, let's talk about BBM, and we're going to close this puppy out. Um, BBM coming with a forthcoming update will bring in the ability to rate a BBM voice call after it happens. So they're going to be able to pull in user feedback on the actual experience that users are having with the BBM application. What right now is everyone's current favorite BBM feature? And then we'll close this out. We'll start with Jube and we'll head back down toward Alex. Favorite BBM feature? That's only one feature. <laughs> favorite one BBM feature. Oh God. Um, the app overall. <laughs> yeah, I know, right. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to have to say, uh, for me personally, I've been thoroughly enjoying and being equally frustrated with channels. I, I, I enjoy the concept. I cannot wait until it's brought uh, into focus and they're able to update it what it should be. And yeah. once that happens, once they you know, um, you know, integrate it and bring all these features, I think it'd be absolutely brilliant. I'm looking forward to that. I utilize channels. It's so it's so limited. Like I, I've been telling people, it's so long. It's so limited. Like the power and the potential of channels alone. Jesus Christ! It's yeah. I wrote about it, man. I think on Crackberry. <laughs> what about what about you, Kev? What's your favorite one BBM feature? Gosh. Um, Legacy OS or BB10? <laughs> it, it, can, it, can, it can be in general. BBM spans years. This thing's been around almost a decade. Next year will be the 10th anniversary of BBM. So I'm open to anything. It's going to say BBM music. <laughs> <laughs> I love me some BBM music. Um, I'm going to have to go with the ping feature, man. Legacy OS was outstanding in the sense that it didn't matter if your phone was on silent. It didn't matter if you were trying to hide from the world. Ping was going to find you, and it was going to let you know that it found you, and it let everybody else around you know that it found you, too. 
So, uh, like, you're, JT, you're, at I, your, you're, you're at your wedding ceremony. Ping! Okay. <laughs> this goes, you know, uh, Jube, you might, you might take some solace in this too because I, uh, I'm, I'm good friends with JT over at uh, InfraBB and um, basically he was out in the movies during Johan's no-no, <laughs> the no-hitter. And uh, he had no idea what was going on. I'm just sitting here my room just watching this TV. I'm glued. I'm not making any kind of movements because I'm pretty superstitious that way with baseball. And uh, I'm realizing, like, wait a sec, this is like seventh inning, still not a single hit, nothing's going on, and I'm not even leaving. I'm not reaching. I'm not calling anybody else. Most I can do is hold my black ring. I'm like, I got to just let JT know. And so I do that. I let him know. Just ping him. He's like, what, what's going on? I was like, you better be watching this. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, whatever it is on. And he's just like, yeah, he gets up out of the theater, runs out when he's able to catch the ending of it, and he's like, thank you, man. <laughs> thank you endlessly for that. So that's just one of those features. It's, it's simple. in history right there. It'll probably never happen again either. Never. B- it's not going to happen. BBM moments. Exactly. What, about you, what about you, Darius? What, was your, what is your favorite one BBM feature? Well... Jubilee said channels. That was one of my two. But the other one I will say is BBM Voice because it is super crystal clear. It is reliable. Um, I don't know when, but I just started being able to use it over my cellular network with AT&T. It just, like, happened out of the blue a couple months back. So I definitely use it now. Like, when I talk amongst my friends, like me and my wife, we really don't even use it, like, you know, my minutes, <laughs> I should say, at all. Like, we just talk on BBM, you know, voice. Like, it's super clear. It is just... You know what, Darius, man? You hit it right. I have friends now that, that if I call them on the regular cellular line, they're like, don't... Why are you calling me on this? Call me on BBM. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, that yeah. much more superior. I'm not mm-hmm. kidding. Like, yeah. why are you calling me on this shit? Call Seriously, me and, I, and I think... And if they really if you implement with, uh, you know, with Secu Smart, like if they really if you implement, you know, Secu Smart into BBM, and can encrypt, you know, those uh, voice calls, like man, that is definitely going to be the way people are going to start moving. Because when you want to talk about transactions of any sort, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, it's definitely reliable. It's super clear. It is better than HD calling that T-Mobile. AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, anyone could ever provide. Like, it's it's what you really need, and it's there when you need it. It's going to be that much more on the Passport, too. Right. <laughs> Can it's you pitch it up? Oh, my God. It's going to be epic. What about you, Brandon? What is your favorite BBM feature? Hands down, BBM groups. Being able to, when I first started using BBM, it was the groups that really got me into it. Being able to, you know, put in calendar events and have it show up on people's devices, being able to sh- put notes, pictures, comment on them and everything. I think it's really cool. And I'm looking forward to uh, being able to use BBM um, group chats with pictures inside the chat. I think that's in one of the beta builds or something where uh, an image shows up in the chat itself and not just in the photo album. You're talking multi-chat, right? E- no, no, like in the group chats. Yeah. Yeah. There's a beta build where uh, you can you can you add a picture to the chat and it shows up within yeah. inside yeah. the chat. I was gonna and ask, it also ends up in the album. Did they come back with ten point three? I have no idea. Mm-mm. Somebody on ten point three find out. <laughs> they actually removed it because yeah. of the, the organizational issues, quote unquote issues, uh-huh. that you know people would comment in line wherever the photo was posted, but it not also be posted in the, the group album. Right. So there's a little bit of disconnect between where the conversation was actually happening. I would love for them to implement a way that you tap on an image and then be able to comment on it directly. You know? It mm-hmm. but it but it stay in line in the actual group conversation so everyone can mm-hmm. read it. Feel in line and also be in the album as well. Alex, mm-hmm. what what about you? We've covered Easy. most of BBM, but I, what's I your favorite? One, no one said. Easy one. I think when I, when I meet someone new and I start text messaging them, what is the one reason why I want them on BBM? It's because I know when I send a message, if there's a D, it got sent to their phone, and when they, there's an R, I know they read it. That is the <laughs> sole primary reason why I get people on BBM as opposed to text messaging. Alex so loves giving out the D. I love <laughs> <laughs> 
That is so funny. Yeah, you got to end it with that one. How many is that? How many is that you got, James? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I just wow. you right now. Oh. No, but I, I love that the R, the, the red, and, and, you know, the BBM presence is what you're talking about, Alex. And, yeah. and I love that. I love having presence in conversation. It's like, okay, this person is not responding, so I can prioritize myself somewhere else into another yeah. conversation. Yeah. So I definitely find that especially for, as a communication tool, just vital to my everyday. So it I, feels my, like it's a live chat, yeah. Exactly. Like you get that presence, mm -hmm. they're right there with you, and if it needs to extend beyond that, you have BBM voice, you have BBM video, you have screen share. And to, to be honest, my favorite feature right now is stickers because right now <laughs> stickers, stickers, whether, whether you think it's a joke or not, is what's keeping BBM profitable for them. And I'm I'm very excited that's, about that's that. That's true. I bought a lot mm -hmm. of stickers. I'm sure you guys have all bought you know you know your fair share of stickers as well. And right now, that's the key monetization factor on BBM outside of enterprise. Mm -hmm. I love the stickers. I love that they've got big names on board. We've kind of wanted them to open up to everybody, but like I, Powerpuff I feel Girls. Like, right. But, but the thing is, like Powerpuff Girls, people know about oh, people. Yeah. People were like, oh shit, Cartoon Network's in the store now. I love Powerpuff Girls. They're never gonna bring that, and lo and behold, they bring it. You know. <laughs> they've brought Pink Panther. We've got Duck Dynasty. We've got South Park. We've got Powerpuff. We've got Adventure Time. We've got a lot of good stickers. And it, it, as I've mentioned before on previous streams, it's not necessarily about the sticker. It's just a key relation point to bring someone into the BBM yeah. family. Yeah. You know, it may be one sticker. You know, one character that they can associate with to get them on board. And Ooh. I really think as a as an execution point for them, starting with stickers and then bringing everything else after the fact is going to be valuable for them, not only monetarily, but from a from a user perspective as well. We need I, more I, wallpapers. Right. We need some more wall, We need some not shitty iPhone wallpapers. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good point that you brought up, though. They should make it so, like, say Disney, they start selling stickers. They should BlackBerry should say, okay, but this money has to go towards a developer to make a native BlackBerry 10 Disney app or something, right? Mm -hmm. The money yeah. that they make from stickers has to go through that. Or yeah, I wish I had a native, the, a native Disney app. I was using that the entire time, and it, goodness, that Android port yeah. was, just, it was a headache and a half, man. Right. So win-win, I think, or like fifty percent of what, your. What I would like to see with that win-win, Alex, is them utilize channels. You know. Yeah, Channels yeah. is a direct social platform. BB, BBM or Disney or whoever can put direct advertisements, sponsored posts. They could do a lot there to integrate brands within BBM to increase uh, the usability. Overall, like we look at the AMG channels where they do live chats with some of the drivers and things like that. Imagine being able to do that with Disney and like, talk to Goofy. I'd talk to Goofy. He and I would have a great conversation. I'd talk to Pluto. He and I would have great – oh, no. <laughs> just be barking and shit anyway I really appreciate mm -hmm. having you guys on it's 10 o'clock I gotta go make dinner myself it's a little bit late I really appreciate having all you guys on and a lot of news to talk about and we're sure to see you next week for another upstream number 12 that's 4, 8, 12 that's 3 months that we've been doing that oh god yeah. oh shit I might bring cupcakes for myself yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway guys take it easy have a good rest of your night bye, bye.